strength, how you develop old man strength, one of the best ways to get old man or old woman strength, doesn't really matter, is using a very old training tool, the Indian Swinging Club. Now these are originally weapons that you would use to defend yourself. It's one of the oldest weapons known to man, right? You have stick, rock, club. This is club, club is heavy. It's really, if you think about what it is, it's a weighted, it's a levered weight, so you can build that wrist power, wrist strength. I'm gonna show you how to use yours. There's a link below if you don't have a pair and you wanna get a pair shipped to you. Your hand comes here to the middle of that first little knot, and you're gonna let it drop and come back. Now, I do these in the mornings before I start teaching all the classes that I'll teach today. This gets the blood flowing into your shoulder joints, into your wrists, into your elbows, you're gonna have your stomach up and in, abs tight, pull your chin in and back a little bit, drop it just a tiny bit, practice breathing, in through your nose, out through your mouth, get full deep breaths, increase the circulation of the blood and the oxygen content of the blood, and as the plasma gets into the joints, it's gonna to start to make them feel great, heal anything that's going on there, and I'm not a doctor, full disclaimer, don't take my medical advice. I'm just telling you my experience. Good morning, Danielle. Good morning, David. Good morning, everybody else. But you're going to start here. Your stomach's up and in, and your heels will touch. And I know you can't see my feet. Just imagine it. I don't need to push the camera down. My heels are together, and they're turned out like a duck. So my toes are apart. Heels together, stomach up and in, abs tight. From the side, it looks like this. Shoulders back and down. Pull your chin back. Drop a little bit. Breathe. In through the nose, out through the mouth. That's going to increase circulation. The more oxygen you have, good morning, awkward cat. The more circulation of oxygen in your body, the more fat you're going to burn. Your body is a fat-burning machine if you give it the right amount of oxygen and movement. This is going to do both. Hold again here at the bottom of your Indian club. This is right here. You can start like this if you're more comfortable as you progress and you become more intermediate or advanced with Indian club swinging, bring your hand down, bring your hand down. And again, you're going to just let it heels together, stomach up and in, let it drop. Let the club weight, let the weight of the clubs do the work. It's similar to swinging kettlebells. Don't muscle them up. Let them move. Let me show you from the side. Again, my heels are together, stomach up and in, abs tight. Focus on your breathing here. Deep, full breathing. Oxygenates the blood. Starts to loosen everything. Starts to make everything. Bonjour. Mantel, Denis, Andre, Jean-Pierre. Uh, all one person. All one name. Uh, good morning. Bonjour. Start a thousand bow staff. Inexplicable says start a thousand bow staff master yesterday. Awesome. Congratulations. In a a uh, hundred days, you'll be an expert of the basics of the bow. If you do just 1,000 spins a day, it's not going to take long. Start with this as your warm-up, and all the other exercises throughout the day become easier. Also, your posture will improve as your stomach comes up and in. You get those shoulders back and down. You're going to have a wider chest. You're going to look taller. You're going to look younger and leaner. Good. Peter says he built one himself using steel pipe and the weights of a dumbbell, making your own I always say invest your time before you invest your money. You start with something like this. Start with two sticks. It should not be heavy. Don't start heavy on the Indian Club. I'm going to show you later. We're going to progress this workout up to a 10-pound club. This is a two-pound club. The link that's below is a one-pound. It's two, two pair. One-pound pair and a two-pound pair. Start with one pound or start with a stick. Take a broom. Cut the broom off. Cut it in half, you have your first pair. That's how I started. What I did was I started to tape ankle weights. The ankle weights would fall apart from using them so much kicking. And I'd take those ankle weights and tape them around my sticks. That's how I got my first club. Way before Amazon Prime free shipping. Now you can get these anywhere and everywhere. Back then, you had to make your own. So your hands on the end. We'll go over that one more time. And I'm showing you just this first motion over and over because I really want you to understand just doing this is gonna give you a world of benefit. You're gonna get stronger, you're gonna get healthier, you're gonna have more flexibility in your joints, more mobility. Now look at my elbows. If I keep the elbows bent, it comes back a little bit. 
At the beginning, that's okay. As you get better, start to extend your arm, and then you get a fuller range of motion. So now you're working on flexibility and mobility just by straightening the arm out. If you want to go back to a little bit, your shoulders are tight or you haven't used them in a long time, you need to fix some strength issues, some mobility issues. Good morning, Naj. Then start small, keep them here. As you get better, start to extend, start to extend. That's your first exercise, your second exercise. When you want old man strength, old woman strength, we're talking about a wicked strong grip. You're gonna get it here. We're talking about pain-free shoulders. And again, I'm not a doctor. This is just my experience and the experience of many others who follow my workouts using this. Tell me, my shoulders feel great, my elbows feel great, my wrists feel great, carpal tunnel's gone, the trigger finger's gone. Don't take my word for it. Figure it out yourself, try it yourself. I'm not a doctor. But you start here, we started with this one, and now I want to take the second exercise and progress the first. So this is gonna add mobility and flexibility, fuller range of motion into the shoulders, into the shoulder joints. When you're working on old man strength, Indian club workout, you need to start with your heels together, toes out like a duck, stomach up and in, drop your chin a little, pull it back, get rid of that turkey neck, right? The turkey neck from staring at screens all day, from poor posture. This is going to get your shoulders back. David says, thank you for time and knowledge. David, it's my pleasure. Shoulders back and down, stomach up and in, breathing through the nose. Germany, it's difficult to buy training stuff. Yes, yeah, so in Germany, start with two sticks. And then later, take those little water bottles or a big water bottle and tape them around the outside of your stick. And then put the water in it or put some rocks, put some sand, put some dirt, add some weight to the water bottle, just tape it really well. I did that to make my Indian clubs from the beginning when I couldn't buy them. But 20 years ago, you couldn't buy this in the United States. It was very difficult to find it. Now you can go to the link below and you can see they'll ship it right to your door, free shipping. And they're inexpensive for a lifetime of healthy joints. And again, I'm not a doctor, full disclaimer, but try it and see what I, see what I mean. All right, so we split this, stomach up and in, abs tight. This is your second exercise. And now you're gonna go back to your first exercise. And I do Indian club swinging in a way to try to keep me lean. I want you to be lean and healthy powerful legs. Now you're going to separate your feet just a little bit and this squatting motion does not have to be low. If you're in great shape, your legs feel great, go lower. If you're starting out, go just a teeny bit. An inch is enough. If you haven't, if you don't have good mobility in your hips and your legs are weak, you have knee issues, you have ankle issues, go a tiny bit, but move just a little and your body's going to change a lot. So from here, I'm going to bring it to the shoulders, a little drip or dip pushing your bum backward, you want to go back and down like you're sitting onto a chair, onto the potty, onto the toilet. Not, not this way, but this way. From here, it comes up and drops just a tiny bit. Look at my elbows. They're not too far out and they're not too close in. They're just in a neutral, natural position, just a tiny little dip. Starting to add the legs in is going to bring your core temperature up. You're going to ignite your fat burning system. You're going to start to light that fat burning stove. <sighs> you want old man strength, old woman strength? Learn how to match your breathing to your moves. A lot of people don't understand about old man strength. We talk about old man strength or old woman strength. The secrets, the secrets are all in here. It's not just about how strong your muscles are. That's important, but not nearly as it doesn't. That's not even that important. That's like 10%. It's all about your knowledge and how you use your body the way it was designed. Your body is extremely strong the way it was naturally designed, even without ever going to the gym. If you learn how to match the breathing with the moves, and so here, not only are you gonna to start to lean your body out, burn off that fat, but you're also going to start to make that mental connection. So when you do go and you pick something up and everybody's saying, wow, that man, that woman is so much stronger than I realized. Danielle says, limited mobility in the shoulder. Yes, Danielle, I promise you, if you start slowly, start with sticks. Start with sticks, no weight. 
and you do these exercises, I promise you, you'll have better mobility in your shoulder. Old man strength, old man or woman strength is all about what you know up here and your attitude and your commitment. And so one of the things you have to understand is most people, when they do hard work, hold their breath. You're waiting to get hit or you're waiting for it to hurt. And so when you hold your breath, you're compromised. Your muscles are screaming and starving. They can't do work without oxygen. Inside every muscle cell is a little fat burning engine, just like in the engine of a car that burns gasoline or diesel. It has to have some fuel, which is fat or the sugar. It has to have some burn, which is that motion, that little spark sent from the brain to the muscle, do the work. But then it also has to have oxygen for it to fire. There's oxygen inside your blood when you breathe deeper, you get more oxygen, you burn more fat, you get more old man strength, old woman strength, because now you're more efficient and your body is extremely strong the way it is now. You don't have to go to the gym for six months, 10 months to get even stronger. Use what you have now. I promise you, you'll unlock it. Uh, Fistful Podcast says, clubs help shoulder pain there. Great. Yes, absolutely. I agree. All right, so we're adding just this tiny little squat Feet are apart now. You're gonna do this for 30 seconds. I want you to sweat. I want you to feel it. I want your legs to be a little sore from the work. No injury, no pain because something's not working right. Just a little sore tomorrow when you wake up and then the next day they'll feel great. And every day you add a little bit more. Do this exercise every morning, 30 seconds here. And then, Go into this position where your elbow's bent and let it drop and bring it around. Let it drop and bring it around. You're just spinning it. From here, notice that my hand is not opening. This is a two pound weight. If I open my hand too much, I can go faster, but I don't get the flexibility, the mobility in the wrist. I want old man strength. Old woman strength, you're gonna have to have four things. Strength, flexibility, mobility, and endurance. For strength, flexibility, mobility, and endurance. From here, you turn, dropping, comes around, use the weight to bring it around. From the other side, I want you to see that same thing. You do them together, elbows together. Now, one quick word about these. You've heard me smack them together, and you know that if that hits the back of your head, because we're gonna go behind the head in a minute, you're gonna imagine how badly that's gonna hurt. I have never, in over 20 years now, using Indian swinging clubs, even the janky ones that I made myself, I've never hit myself in the head with an Indian club, ever. Sometimes you'll smack them together, smack them behind you, and it startles you a little bit, but I have never hit myself. I guarantee you're probably never gonna hit yourself either. Now, from here, I go forward in this spin, and I wanna do it at the same time, and I'm breathing, stomach up and in, abs tight, drop the chin a little bit, put your heels back together, kick your toes out like a duck and then reverse it. 30 seconds forward, 30 seconds back. If you need to cut it down 15 in each direction, twice, 10, three times, five, six times, doesn't matter. But just go forward, go back. Do a few forward, do a few back, and then put those together with what you already know, dropping. Now you're up to four exercises when you're trying to get old man strength, old woman strength, and these are gonna go fast once you get this routine down. You're gonna build wicked strength power in your grip especially. If you have, if you're, uh, you do self-defense, striking, if you do self-defense, grappling or grabbing, twisting, you need a powerful arm. Set of arms, shoulders, wrists, elbows, fingers, and grip. Your grip is gonna become so strong. You're gonna have old man strength, old woman strength in your grip because of spinning like this, forward, backward, Exercise number four, you're gonna go dropping it like we did, but add a spin down. Bringing it up like you've already done, add a spin up. So you're gonna spin down, bring your heels back together, stomach up and in. Focus on your breathing. Get the oxygen into the muscles to burn the fat. What good is old man strength and old woman strength if you have no endurance, no flexibility, no mobility, and you have great strength, that's just one out of four you need. This is gonna give you the other three while also increasing strength. And strength where you really need it. You need strong wrists, you need strong shoulders, and you need healthy, pain-free shoulders and wrists. 
so that you can, and elbows, so that you can do all the other old man strength exercises, old woman strength, but especially I do these because it feels good, it's a great workout, it keeps me lean and strong, and it prepares me for all the self-defense, all the self-defense training I do during the day, how to practically defend yourself. So we're going up, going down, 30 seconds there. Let's review real quick in case you're just joining. This is the first exercise, heels together, and you're gonna hold here so your finger goes halfway through that little knot, and if not, just bring it here. The hand is closed and relaxed. If it's tight, it's changing grip. All the muscles are flexed. You're not gonna get the mobility, the flexibility. So I'm gonna have closed and uh, relaxed at the same time. Thumb over there. Once you progress, get your pinky to carve this right in the middle. From the side, this is the first exercise. Stomach up and in, drop chin, pull it back, breathe in through the nose. As you start to get better, extend the arms, get a fuller range of motion. Exercise two, split them. Exercise three, open your feet a little bit, add a little squat at the top, bend the elbows, Bring these up to your shoulders, just a little bit down, a little bit up. Exercise four, heels together again, drop and bring it up. Get rid of the little squat for now. And now what I like to do is I like to do a set of those squats in between all of the rest of the exercises just to make me sweat like this, to lean me out. I, it's going gonna, it's gonna to affect your cardiovascular health, your heart and your lungs. It's going to make you leaner. It's going to be like going for a vigorous walk for 10 minutes. If you add this between every exercise, then you can play around with your feet. Start with your feet a little wide and then go a little narrow, change them. If you want, you can modify this one by adding little stepping lunges to the front or to the back. Oh, I just stepped on, stepped on another set back there. I want to show you the other sets. Back and back. Then, exercise number five. We're gonna start the mill. This is what you may have seen before when you've seen Indian club swinging, if you've ever seen it. You're gonna start in the right hand, or pick a hand, it doesn't matter. You have two hands, you're gonna do them both. Your heels are together, stomach up and in, abs, drop the chin, bring it in, across the body. Your knuckles will face the sky. It's almost like you're trying to hitch a ride. This is really important. When you start to do this faster, almost everybody I work with at the beginning, starts doing this, and then they get frustrated because they lose the motion. See how it's the club is facing the sky? It's the knuckles. As soon as you push the knuckles to the sky and the thumb out like you're hitching a ride, then it's gonna be in the right position. From here, I'm gonna reverse it. I'm going right back out. I bring my fist or my hand, palm facing behind me and about in line with my shoulder. Now, if this is too much and your shoulder hurts, just do it smaller, do it smaller. Do, this, do the whole motion smaller. Baby steps, right? Slow is smooth, smooth is fast, or think about crawl, walk, run. You're gonna be running in a few months, but allow yourself to crawl until you can speed it up. From here, I'm gonna do this 30 seconds because I just want to get the blood, the plasma, the oxygen to flow in there to make it stronger, healthier, and to start to build the strength. Now, your shoulder has three basic heads, right? You have the front, the side, and the back. And it's, I think, anterior, medial, posterior. I'm not a doctor. Front, medial, back. This exercise, I know so much about the shoulder because of the bow and because all my life I've been trying to get stronger, healthier shoulders because I understand how important this is. Okay, so Dano said this is the motion that pins your shoulder. So if this motion pins your shoulder, just swing it right here. Just that much. Don't bring it out. If this, if this is what gets you pinned, I'm assuming it's either here, Denel, or it's here, then don't do that. Don't do that yet. Just do a little bit. And then see if you can't increase the flexibility, but allow, think about how long you've had the shoulder issue. It's not gonna take that long to fix it, but if it's been a long time, allow it to go slowly. Oh yeah, so um, what probably, so Denel says, I think I pulled it during the Obi-Ani spin. Probably what's happened is because you weren't strong enough yet and the saber's a little bit heavier, then you may have impinged something or you locked something up. So this is going to loosen it up. This is going to slowly. So if it's not a lifelong injury, 
just go real small and then over a few training sessions add this motion bring it out a little bit add this motion bring it out a little bit and now i want you to open your elbow and when you open your elbow you're going to stick this behind your head see how it's behind my head and again like i said before i've never hit myself you're not going to hit yourself it's going to feel like it or like like it's possible, but it's not like, especially because you say, well, look how big that is. It's gonna hit my head, it's not. So from here, open the elbow. Bring it to here, open the elbow. Bring it to here, open the elbow, and there's one more part of this, which is casting. Like you're casting a fishing pole, or you're throwing a knife, or a hatchet. You're gonna cast, but don't let it go, right? Cast, and let it drop. Don't try to stop it from dropping. This is where it's more like a kettlebell in that you let the weight and the momentum pull you back around. So from here, let it pull you around, open, cast, open, cast. Now stomach up and in, abs tight, heels together like a duck, toes perned, full, perned out or pushed out. Daniel, I've been there. Daniel says, yeah, that's how it happened. She was talking about the Obi-Ani spin. When it's... When your uh, motion's too fast, or your shoulders aren't strong enough yet, yet, you have to slow down and, and work backward a little bit and give yourself time to grow. I, I like to say, you know, a year is gonna pass whether you do something or not. But if you take your time and you do a little bit over a year, by the end of the year, you'll have done a massive amount because it accumulates and you get better as you do it. So you do higher level things over a period of the year. If you do nothing for a year, then a year still passes. So instead of taking the approach, I wanna do everything now, which is our human nature, say I'm gonna do a little bit now and tomorrow a little bit. And then that's where self-discipline comes in. Discipline yourself. It'll be good for you in every case. So we're gonna come across. Danielle, me too, we all do. That's the uh, gift of age. The gift of age is you learn your lesson sometimes, sometimes. You bring, and then you forget it, and then you have to relearn it. You bring it out, but the good news is anything you mess up, you can fix. That's been my experience. You mess it up, you can fix it. Just take your time, find the right coach, find the right training. After you've done this for about 10, 10 to 15 moves or 30 seconds, add that open of the elbow. That opens your chest from here, just opens it there, and then you're gonna cast, just let it drop. Cast and drop. Slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Take your time, invest your time in moving slowly. And anything worth doing is worth doing poorly at first. That means just take your time. King Henchy says, what's up, what's up? King Henchy, it's good to see you. Then put them together, do one hand and then the other one. Now, the first training session, you're not gonna get this. Probably, you might, I didn't. And if you don't get it like this, don't worry about it. Just do one hand for 30 seconds and then the other hand for 30 seconds. But at some point, you're going to be able to start to pull your stomach up and in, drop your chin, breathe, and speed it up and make bigger motions and focus on different aspects or different parts of that three-step move. Focus going going higher Going lower, focus on going faster, or really big, wide, turning the motion, stomach up and in. And now you're gonna reverse it all. Pull this out, palm out, facing behind you, turn it and cut through. So you're sort of reversing the motion, but it's not completely reversing the motion at the beginning until you build your strength and flexibility. So don't overthink it, but go in the opposite direction. Out, turn, through. Out, turn, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. Once you get it, do one hand, then do the other hand, and then put them together. And then go back and forth. Go out, do this for 30 seconds, and then reverse it. And then when you're ready, same time. When you do the same time, notice that one hand's in front 
And the next time you come through, the other hand is in front. So stomach up and in, abs tight. See how much I'm opening the chest before I cast. Exaggerate all the motions. Heels together. Reverse it. And then I want you to do one more, and this is one of my favorites because it's so good for old man strength, old woman strength. When you're going for more strength, when you want to learn how to use Indian club swinging workouts or Indian swinging workouts to Indian club swinging, I think you have to have the club in there. I think you have to have all three, Indian club swinging workouts. When you do that and you're going for old man strength, you want to really engage the core as much as possible. And this, all the exercises up till now is going to help your posture and engage the core. This next one's really going to work it though. I'm going to face one direction. So my left foot's in front and face to the left. I'm going to bring it to my shoulders and I'm going to let it drop. And then I'm just going to turn and face the right, 180 degrees. My right foot's now in front, stomach up and in, bring it to the shoulders, let it drop. And I know I'm oversimplifying, I'm breaking it down. Bring it up and then drop. And I'm gonna, I need to give myself a little bit better camera angle. So hold on for a second, I'm gonna move the camera. I, just, I, I don't need you to see my feet. I just want you to see more of the body and more of the move. So from here, now as I let it drop, I'm gonna let the momentum turn me to here. Let the momentum turn you to the other side. From one side, lead with your head, lead with your head. Wherever your head goes, your body follows. Wherever your head goes, your body follows. So if you turn your head, your brain will make those instant calculations of how to move and place your feet so you have a perfect balance. If you move at the same time as your head moves, you're always going to be falling into the next position. It's not going to be as effective. Um, Krav Maga, I've taken lots of classes in Krav Maga and seminars, Angie Kundo. I personally am not a fan of the Krav Maga. And it doesn't mean I'm against Krav Maga, I just don't like, I'm not a fan of it, right? And it's because, uh, and a lot of seasoned martial arts artists will either, they'll love Krav Maga if it's aligned to them culturally or religiously. In other words, they're, um, you know, they're, they're, they, they, they have some lineage, some attachment to Jerusalem because it comes from Isra or Israel, Israeli Defense Forces, or they love it because it, it has great marketing behind it. And like here, in this, popu in this community, there are a lot of people who are older. There are a lot of people from, who go to the synagogue on Satur or Saturdays. And so Krav Maga is very popular, very popular, because it has, there's a cultural affinity, as it should. It, you know, a lot of Koreans love Taekwondo. Japanese love karate, love jujitsu. Brazilian people do capoeira, or that's just normal. That's normal, that's good, right? Uh, but um, the other part of it is, there's, there's nothing special or fancy in Krav Maga that we, don't, we haven't already been doing for a million years. Jeet Kune Do, I have a little bit different opinions on that one. I'll explain that sometime. I'm not against it, but again, I see the value. I see the value in all of this. I see great value in Krav Maga. Value, if it's the only thing you can train, train the Krav Maga. If you can only find some Jeet Kune Do, do the Jeet Kune Do. If you want super effective practical martial arts, follow Tim Larkin on here. Learn some Tony Blower stuff. Um, basic, and you'll start to understand that self-defense is not martial arts. Martial arts is not self-defense. There's a crossover. They use a lot of the same moves, but one is not the other. Uh, and, and, once, and, and that's good. I love martial arts because of a million reasons, not self-defense. That's not one of them. I love self-defense for the reason that I want to be able to protect myself and my family. And self-defense has principles and uses techniques of martial arts but if I were going to teach, as I teach my own kids and my students here, we do a lot of boxing. We do a lot of basic kicking that you'd find in Muay Thai, Taekwondo, Tang Soo Do, Karate. We do some, um, we do a little bit of Jeet Kune Jeet Do. And then we do all the same things that Krav Maga does. We just don't call it Krav Maga. Because Krav Maga is a, is a mixture of all those things too. And it's, it's a mindset. And uh, the only thing I don't love from Krav Maga is when they show them taking away guns. Because I think that's really silly and impractical. All right, from here, you're going to turn to here. Turn your head first, turn your head first. Sorry, I got off on that tangent on the Krav. Turn your head, turn your head. 
from here add a spin and drop it and spin and bring it up. So now you're going to add all those motions that you did before. And I realize it's not going to be from the very beginning that you're going to be able to do that. Now, let me say one more thing about the Krav Maga and I, I'm sorry, I opened this can of worms, but this is important. This is my opinion. I could be wrong. What's right for you is not necessarily right for me. So take everything I say with a grain of salt and then go find out for yourself. Is Krav Maga right for me? It might be, it might be the best thing for you, better than all the things that I do. And then do that. But, but don't, and, and that's another part of it. Don't worry about what anybody else says. Don't take any expert word. Don't take my expert word. You might have some reason why Krav Maga is the perfect fit for you or Jeet Kune Do or Tai Chi for that matter. It's not for me. I love the martial art I started with, which is Judo, because it was the first martial art. I st I st then I went to Taekwondo. I love Taekwondo because of that. I love boxing. I've always been a big fan of boxing. Now down here, there's all these great boxing coaches. I'm taking boxing lessons whenever I can. I love the things I love because of me. That has nothing to do with you. And every expert you see here on the YouTube and everything else, that's, because, that's their thing, right? So hear what they say. Take what you can from it. This is Bruce Lee idea. Here, take, take a little bit of everything. Find what's valuable to you. And the rest of it, I don't say discard it. I say put it to the side for now because you're going to change over time. And as you evolve and grow as a human being and you mature, different things are going to have value to you at different times. You might be a young person working out in the gym. Bodybuilding might be for you. You get older, you go through middle age. Like a lot of people do, you get into the CrossFit. Like a lot of people do, you start to get a little bit older. You've done the CrossFit for a while. You don't feel as uh, capable of defending yourself anymore. The world's a little different. Krav Maga might speak your language. And then, so you do what, you do what is important to you at the time, but don't ever get to the habit where you say, that's wrong, this is wrong. It's, don't be black and white. Understand that things are different. It's not good, it's not bad, it's different. Stop having such strong opinions. Stop saying everything you're not gonna do. Stop that. It drives me nuts. People tell me all the time, well, I can't do this, I won't do that, I'm not gonna do that, I don't do that because, and I say, well, have you tried it? No. <laughs> so-and-so said, well, stop repeating so-and-so. You might not know it, but so-and-so's, <laughs> I'm not going to say so-and-so has their own reasons, right? And they're not your reasons. So make up your own, find your own reasons and then be open to everything. Say it's not good. It's not bad. It's simply different. These are one of my favorite tools for this, for health of the joint and for this, for a wicked, powerful, strong grip and for striking, for blocking. You can't, in my opinion, you can't get much better than these. Let me show you before I go because I brought them out. This is the two pound pair. And as I said before, if you haven't done it yet, Go with sticks. Start with sticks. Invest your time before you invest your money. See if you like the motions. If you like the motions and you can get them down and they start to add value, then go to the link below and get a one pound pair and a two pound pair. Go from one pound, you'll very quickly move up to the two pound. Then you're going to see online five pounds and 10 pounds and heavier and heavier and heavier. And you're going to say to yourself, even from the beginning, you're going to say to yourself, well, I'm strong, I'm healthy, I, I'm a strong dude, I wanna get stronger faster, I'm gonna get the five, no, I'm gonna get the 10 pound. I did that. Here's where you can learn from my mistake. You're gonna hurt yourself. All, you're gonna hurt your hands, your wrists, your elbows, your shoulders. You're gonna hurt yourself with a heavy pair of Indian swinging clubs if you don't start light. You work up to these, do not buy a heavy pair. Don't buy a five pound pair and don't buy a 10 pound pair unless you've been doing it for a while and then get that five pounder. In my workout, after we turn off the camera, I'm going to pick up the uh, five pounders here and I'm going to do all the same things. The only thing I didn't show you that I do, I'm trying to get them to stand up so I don't have to lean down again. The only thing I didn't show you that I'll also do with these is practicing my Sinawali, just the basic Sinawali that I use in Kali martial arts, and it's not gonna be fast, but it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna stretch, I feel it into my shoulders, and it's gonna make me extremely strong and fast when I do my Kali stick fighting, or I fight with the nunchucks, or I fight with the bow. And I can do, I worked up to this. Don't do this from the start, but work up to that. I'll do that in another video. Then, with this one, I'm gonna now do almost everything. 
I'm going to do these. Well, I've got the other one here, right? I'm going to do all these motions. I'm going to do my mills. I'm going to do them. And I'm really going to crank my heels together. This is going to make me burn fat and sweat. This is going to give me old man strength for days. And I'm going to do those motions with these. Then I'm going to pick those, put those down and get this big, ugly 10 pounder. And I'm not going to do as much from this one. I'm going to bring them out and squat here. I'm going to bring them close first. Then I'm going to start to push them out farther to really put stress on my abdominal muscles and my shoulders and my grip and my arm. And I'm going to get old man strength from the heavier ones. And then I'm going to uh, separate the swing. I'm going to, but I'm going to do one hand at a time because now I'm messing with heavy weights. And if you injure that, it's hard for that to heal on its own. You don't want to overdo it. So don't buy the 10 pounders. Then I'm going to do, but I'm only going to do one arm at a time. And this is going to move my whole body. See how it's pulling me over? Just 10 pounds. You think 10 pounds is light. It's not in, a, in an Indian club. It's extremely heavy. And they get even heavier from here, right? So use your common sense and take my warning. Start with a one pound, start with sticks. And then look at the link below, get those light pair. Then work up over a period of months, three months, six months, nine months. Nine months from now, if you start today, you can be into those five pounders for basic moves. And then and there's, a, there's a million more moves. I haven't shown you, you know, I, we're scratching the surface. I love these things. You're gonna get old man strength, old woman strength every single time you use Indian club swinging workout. Indian swinging club or Indian club workout Builds old man strength, old woman strength. That's the whole point. But these 10 pounders, these are not, they're not used the same way as the light ones. And then you're gonna see, they make that great sound too. 15 pounds, 20 pounds, 30 pounds, you're gonna get bigger. And they're gonna be these big monster things. And you're gonna use two hands, and you're gonna come around the body. We're gonna do like goblet squats. I like to do this motion for my shoulders or you can turn it around uh, a little stiff this morning and then you go lower and then I use it just for that old man grip, just down and up. Now I got a then 10 pounds, that's a lever weight. And if you don't have these and you wanna go up, get yourself some ball peen hammers, right? Some of those hammers with the little head, the head weighs about two pounds, get one for each hand and then work up to sledge hammers, hand hammers. I've got the, 10 pound, or the, the five pound, the eight pound, the 10 pound, and the 12 pound sledge, and a 15 pound sledge over in the corner. We do everything from smashing them against stuff to all of these basic exercises, building strength, stamina, improving core strength, getting you really, really, really strong. Uh, it says how important balance to the wide area at the end. Doesn't matter that much. Um, in a perfect world, it's perfectly balanced, but then you'd have, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to handle variation, right? Variation's great. So if the weight's all over here and not here, just turn it a little bit, play around with it. Don't wait to start, start now, start with sticks, start with sticks. And then, like I said, I would take the ankle weights out of the old ankle weights we would wear to make our legs stronger for kicking. And then I would tape them just, you know, half a pound each. Now I have a pound and a half plus whatever, however many ounces the collie stick weighed. I think I started with a broomstick. So it was probably some old piece of oak or hickory or something. And then just build your way up. But protect your shoulders, protect your body. Don't go, don't buy these. This is that Onnit brand. If you're a Joe Rogan follower, he used to promote this all the time. They're in the uh, human hacking space or whatever. They do the mushrooms for focus and stuff like that. It's a great brand, I love the brand, but, and these are, they're pricey, and you pay for shipping. Start with the ones that are linked below. Don't go heavy. I, I promise you, you're gonna hurt yourself, like I did, I'm only speaking from experience, because my ego got in the way, and I had to learn the hard way. Even though everybody told me, don't go heavy, I'm thinking, well, I'm a big guy, I can go heavy, what do you know? <laughs> I found out, I didn't know anything, and that's my final word. Remember, all of the expert stuff coming out of my mouth or any other expert, and they tell you, do this, don't do that, do this, learn, um, see it, 
value it, understand it, but verify for yourself. And then uh, compare it to the things that you can do and do something. Don't wait to start. Do something. And don't let anybody else tell you why you can't. And stop saying what you're not going to do. Stop telling everybody, I'm not going to do this. I don't. He said that, and I told him, I don't do that. Stop doing that. That's limiting your life. Open your life to get old man strength, old woman strength. You have to be able to grow your whole life. And as soon as you stop growing, that's where the decline comes. You guys are awesome. I will see you. See